Hello everyone, this is uh, Professor Hausman. I've gotten a lot of um, emails from students and questions about the uh, historical source analysis and the documents that you're supposed to be using. Uh, so I'm going to give you a quick tutorial on how to find those on uh, Facebook. And I'll also be sending out an email with the link to the folders page as well. So let's take a look here. This is the, uh, the course Facebook page. And what I did was I moved up the folder to the top of the I posted it to the pin to the top of the Facebook page. So if you go to the Facebook page, you're going to see this link here. It says here's a link to the folder for the documents that you'll be using for your historical source analysis. I'll be adding more, so make sure you keep checking in. Uh, if if I were you, I'd, I'd bookmark the link so it's easier to find. So what you could do here, how you open this, you can either click here on the link or you can click directly on the Google Drive account here. So if you click on this right here, it's going to open up a, a new page showing the documents that I want you to read. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen documents. Some le some long, some short. Uh, one secondary uh, document. The rest are primary. So if you click the first one, this is the fir the the historical source analysis instructions. Um, be remember that you're writing a well written essay in which you. Um, discuss the relations between the British Americans and the Native Americans, what were the motivating factors that determined the treatment of Native Americans by the white settlers, how did the Native Americans react, uh, and then I, I told you to be sure to include examples of race, privilege, and racism in your discussion, as well as at least three of the course themes as mentioned in the course syllabus. Um, you may use outside sources in your analysis, but the majority of your analysis must be based on the documents, which I just showed you. And then a quick reminder of how to do the, um, the Google Doc setup here, which you can watch the video below this link to be able to figure that out. So as you click on each of these documents, um, it'll open up and kind of give you the basic readings. Um, and th there's some questions that I provided within the syllabus on how to go through these documents when you read them. Um, let's take a let's see if we can open that up really quick here. So let's see here. Syllabi. So if we open up the course syllabus here and we scroll down, so here's the course themes that I was talking about. So you should talk about identity, work exchange technology, peopling politics and power, America and the world, environment, geography, ideas and beliefs and culture. Those are the themes that you could bring up. Remember to choose at least three of those to bring up in your in your um, essay. And if we continue scrolling down past the course calendar, past the uh, policies, and continue going down further and further, <clears throat> I have the section on, where is it at here? There it is, historical source analysis you can have two of them. So if you look at this section here, it says that when reading the sources, take notes and try to answer the following questions. What's the subject? What's the occasion? Who's the intended audience? How would that have been received? How they would have received the document? What was the purpose in writing the document? Does the writer have a particular point of view? Who's the speaker? And what's the tone? And then when you're writing your analysis, make sure you have a relevant thesis. You cite the evidence from the included source perspectives. You analyze the documents by grouping them in as many appropriate ways. I mean, you may group them by theme. You may group them um, by however, however you wish, but themes are probably the best way. Um, it does not simply summarize the documents, so you actually analyze them. Tell me not just what they say, but why you think they say, them, say that. And it takes into account both the sources of the documents and the author's point of view or bias. And it should be three to four pages typed, double space, one inch margins, as all the instructions say. So when, you, when you're when you looking through the primary sources, to do your citations, on the bottom you're going to have the source where they got the information, so this should be your citation. So if you cite this, you should say, you know, cited it as, you know, Benjamin Church, the history of the King Philip's War, Boston, John Kimball Wiggin, um, 1865, pages 5 through 11. So all the sources are, all the citations are given for you, so there's nothing, no big surprise there. So hopefully this will clarify um, any questions anyone has uh, on the, on the uh, historical source analysis. So please make sure you watch this video and uh, go ahead and get started on that.